How did it go from this to this? First, if you aren't familiar with the VHS to digital conversion, please go check out the best easy way to capture analog video, It's a Little Weird, by Technology Connections. In his video, he explains the complexities of converting VHS analog video into a digital format that looks good. The point he made, and most people agree with him, is that there's a very steep diminishing return on the quality to effort scale. For example, the difference between a $35 solution and an hour's worth of work versus a $1,000 plus solution with more than 10 hours of work only results in a barely noticeable difference in quality. So I made this video for those of us who want to push the boundary on how good of quality we can get out of a VHS tape. One of the reasons I chose to take on this project is because VHS tapes start to degrade after about 10 to 25 years. The rate of that decay varies based on many factors, but it's still a fact that old VHS home movies won't last forever and they need to be digitized before being completely unwatchable. For more information on VHS tape decay, please check out How Long Do VHS Tapes Last? Digitize Your Old Tapes ASAP by Tech Review Guy. For my video, I'll be using clips from a VHS tape that's over 30 years old and already has noticeable amounts of degradation. To start, I'll cover the most simple and affordable option. I will use this method as a control with the assumption that this is the most average quality VHS conversion method. This is a product made by Little World. They advertise it as a USB 2.0 audio to video converter with the ability to connect the RCA or S video input. You can think of it as an all in one converter. I purchased this one on Amazon for $12.99. Mine arrived in an easy to open package with an included CD containing a VHS to DVD capture software on it. I found that this software adequately gets the job done. Next, I'll install the VHS to DVD capture software that was included with the converter. I'll cover more on the model VCR I'm using later in the video, but for now I'll just mention, I like this VCR because it allows you to adjust a few more things than the average VCR. Some of these controls include contrast level, interlaced or progressive display, and the option to upscale the video resolution from 480 to 1080 all within the VCR itself. For the easiest option, I'm setting the VCR to output what a standard $20 VCR would use. It's now set to display 480i for this initial conversion method video. In the VHS to DVD software, I left all the settings on default before hitting the record button. The tape is a total of 18 minutes long, so I'm just going to highlight three short clips to compare after each method. This is what the original 480p would look like if we kept it at its true resolution on a 4K TV screen. After scaling it up to a 4K television size, the video editing software I use gave its best guess as to what the missing pixels should look like. This result looks like a less sharp version of the original video. On the effort to quality scale, I give this method a 5 out of 10. Now that I have a control video, my next step is to physically clean it up. This is a slightly scary looking DIY VHS cleaning system I rigged up out of a thrifted VHS tape rewinding machine. After wedging open the tape cover, I was able to gently hold a microfiber cloth against the magnetic ribbon as it fast forwarded and rewinded. In theory, this should remove any surface dirt and dust that has settled on the tape over the years. The next step in cleaning is using this VCR head cleaner kit. I think the directions are fairly understandable and it was a relatively easy process to clean my VCR head, which is the part that reads the VHS tape. Again, in theory, this will remove any dirt or dust that has accumulated over the years. Now I'll explain my choice of VCR. For a short time during the change from VHS to DVD, manufacturers made a combination VCR and DVD machine specifically for VHS to DVD transfers. The quality of those transfers are not great, which is why I'm not including it in this video, but it was an extremely easy process when I did it. Some of the last versions of these combo machines that were made even included an HDMI output. That HDMI output is significant due to the built-in chip that automatically scales the image resolution from 480 to 1080. The difference between my editing software and this VCR scaling the video to a larger screen is unnoticeable in my opinion. But I will use the VCR to scale the video this time since it eliminates one step in my very long process. I also like using the VCR's HDMI output because it's able to supply an additional piece of video information stored on the VHS tape called Luma, also known as brightness. To briefly sum up my reasoning, I'm using the VCR's HDMI output in order to capture more information in the form of brightness and auto upscale the video to 1080i, which can help me a lot with the restoration process down the road. To learn more about this topic, please check out the video, S Video Fully Explained, Retro Gaming Arts by Retro Gaming Arts. So here is my current setup for the medium effort method. 
I picked up this Panasonic DMR ES46 VS VHS DVD recorder at my local thrift store for $150. From this VCR's HDMI output, the signal travels to this HDMI splitter. That signal then travels to my Elgato Game Capture HD60S, which is sold new at $179.99. That signal is then processed by the HD60S and sent via a USB-C to USB-A 2.0 cable to my computer. If you're now thinking to yourself, hmm, something doesn't make sense here, then you'd be correct based on the information you currently have. For that part of my process, I'd really like to add helpful context with clear explanations which are easy to understand. However, due to the high potential for people to take that information and use it irresponsibly, I've chosen to circle around this topic. So to avoid even the slightest possibility of trouble, I will now replace this sensitive topic in my video with some relaxing color book activities. For a completely unrelated video topic, please head on over to Macrovision, the copy protection in VHS by Technology Connections. Follow along with me if you like. First, we'll start at the VCR and use the HDMI port to output. Now, to the Elgato HD60S HDMI input. Finally, we connect the HD60S to the PC using the USB-C output to the computer's USB-A 2.0 input. Don't forget to circle around the sensitive topic. Does your drawing look like mine? Good. You get an A. Up next, I'll go ahead and play the newly cleaned VHS tape in the newly cleaned VCR. Now that the hardware is ready to go, let's get the software going. The program I'll be using is called Virtual Dub 2. To learn more, please watch the video, The Ultimate VHS Capture Guide by Notlu. This software is a fan favorite, is free to download, and is considered by most to be the best VHS capture software. I chose to use Logarith Lossless Codec, which means it's going to take up a lot of storage space. My initial interlace capture was 43 gigabytes. This VCR has the ability to de-interlace the image, but it doesn't do an excellent job at it. Since I was going for the highest quality possible, I outputted the signal at 1080i, and use the Virtual Dub software to get a better deinterlaced image. Another advantage to deinterlacing in Virtual Dub 2 afterwards is the ability to keep frames after separating them. This bumps up the frame rate from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second. I personally like having 60 frames per second for home videos because it adds a more real life feeling during playback. It also helps having the extra frames for the software tools I'll be using later. I just finished the Virtual Dub 2 deinterlacing process and the video is now an unreasonable 128 gigabytes in size and needs to be compressed. It's also unplayable in its current format by any other video players. So for the next step, I'll be using Handbrake. Handbrake is a video transcoder and is another free open source software preferred by most. I used Handbrake to compress the video down to 3 gigabytes. This is the result at its original 1080p. Like for the last method, I'll scale it up to a 4K screen. I can already see a big difference in the brightness, which I mentioned can help with the quality. Here I'll compare the control video to the new one. A lot of these changes will come down to personal preference. But I think that I'm correct in saying this is a noticeably improved recording. I named this one the medium method, and I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 on my effort to quality scale. Now it's time to see how far I can really push it. This last process I'll call the extreme effort method. At the time of this recording, Topaz Video AI 4 is $300 and not intended for VHS quality videos. It's trained primarily on HD and 4K videos, so it's hopelessly lost when dealing with footage that is at best 480p. I spent countless hours trying to find a workaround for this. I've tried tricking it into thinking it's just blurry HD footage. I've tried starting at 480p and upscaling it by only 100 pixels at a time until I get to 1080p. No matter how many different ways I tried, all the VHS footage ended up looking bad. But I paid $300 to get an AI upscaled version of my first birthday, so I kept at it. Eventually I found a magic combination of controls that gave me a 1% better looking video than before. With a successfully remastered AI version of the video, I'll continue to enhance it in Adobe Premiere Pro. I use the Adobe Cloud service which costs $60 for access to most of their software. It's amazing what a quick color edit can do to improve the quality of these old videos. My personal preference for VHS color restoration is to start with the auto set button built into the software. Then make your own minor adjustments to the video after that. 
To finish, I double checked the white balance to make sure the colors look good. Why didn't I do this before using the AI software? The answer is, I've done the video color editing before using the AI and it didn't change the outcome either way. So I just went with this order because nothing matters at this point. Now that I cleaned up the video, it's time to clean up the audio using Adobe Edition. My method for VHS audio restoration comes from bits and pieces of different YouTube videos on the topic. I eventually landed on my own preferred method. My general rule of thumb is to start with baby stepping the noise reduction process. To do that, I'll find a quiet moment in the audio and select the ambient background noise. It's important to get rid of the hissing of the camcorder and other unwanted noises, but to not accidentally start erasing frequencies that belong to other voices or other things that you'd like to keep. Otherwise, it'll start to sound weird and wrong very quickly. A lot of my process involves trying something out, double checking that it didn't make it worse, then adjusting the sliders a little bit more, and then repeat. Eventually, I'll end up with something that sounds like this. Another program I use is a plug-in for Premiere Pro called Neat Video, and it's considered by most to be the best noise reduction software available. It costs $80 for this plugin. While I do like it for denoising, I generally use it for sharpening VHS videos. I have no explanation for myself, I just think it sharpens these VHS videos better than any other program I've tried. Now I'm ready to export. After reviewing this version of the video, it still didn't feel quite there. I went ahead and threw it back into Video AI again to add some film grain. I've learned through my many hours of trial and error that an overly smooth image will always look just a little bit off. One way to fix this is to add back some texture in the form of noise or film grain. Video AI 4 has a great built-in feature for this, and to me it looks more realistic than any of the effects in Premiere Pro. Okay, now to review the extreme effort method. First, we started with a 1080i VHS recording. Two, we used the VCR to upscale it to 1080i. Three, we transmitted through an HDMI port to an HDMI splitter. The signal was then transmitted to a video capture device which processed the signal. Five, that signal was then transmitted via USB-C to USB-A 2.0 from the video capture device to my personal computer. Six, it was then recorded by Virtual Dub 2 in a lossless codec at 1080i. Seven, it was then deinterlaced by Virtual Dub 2 into a lossless codec at 1080p. Eight, it was then compressed by handbrake into a usable sized file. Nine, it was restored using Video AI 4 by Topaz Labs. 10. It was color corrected using Adobe Premiere Pro. 11. The audio was restored using Adobe Audition. 12. The video was sharpened using the Neat Video plugin. And 13. Film grain and noise were added back using Video AI 4. After all that, here's the final version comparison. For the extreme effort method, I give this a 0 0.5 out of 10 on the effort to quality scale. I lost count of how many hours I spent on this method, but I do have well over 10 hours of screen capture time of me working on this. Please let it be enough for you all to know I did it, so you don't have to. Thank you for your time and please consider subscribing.